All right, so for the last talk, unfortunately. You know, at one point we had like two nights of fire talks. I don't know if anybody remembers that. Like we had like, like a whole, I don't know. So we had like 12 speakers and then. <laughs> I don't know. Well, so someone said we're not that old, but you know, when you get old, you can't really remember what's old and what's not old, but. Where am I? I'm definitely that old. <laughs> I'm older. <laughs> Only by a little. Do you have a porch and are you telling kids to get off your lawn yes, with the comment? Yes, I have both and I do. I have actually done told kids to get off my lawn. <laughs> there is an awesome picture that somebody put together. If you go to the ShmooCon Slack, uh, the unofficial ShmooCon Slack, and you go and you join the Fire Talks channel, if you just scroll back to I don't, I don't know, maybe like December, there's a great picture that somebody put together with Space Probe. G, G did, did that. G did. Bruce, Bruce did that. All right. So for our last talk, we have Ray redacted. <laughs> and this is just an update on uh, the latest 411 on the 419s. So very interested to see what Ray has to say. So without further ado, Ray. Once, once upon a time, really not that long ago at all, uh, my grandmother died. And somebody reached out to me on Facebook, an old family friend, to express their concern about what was going on in the funeral. And just like at most grandparent funerals, there was a lot happening all at once, but this particular family friend wanted to reach out and let me know that she wanted to send us some money for the funeral. In fact, they wanted to send $150,000. I just needed to work through an agent of Facebook at Western <laughs> Union in order to send a small processing fee that we could take care of all of this. Today we're going to be talking about the 411 on 419s. Who am I? I'm a technologist and a researcher. I'm Ray Redacted on Twitter, if you don't catch that from the fact that every single slide is tagged with that. Uh, but just to give you a little bit of definitions, that scam, the scam where someone offers to give you a bunch of money in order to entice you to send them some money, that's actually called the pigeon drop. And it's really, really old, much older than email or any electronic communications at all. The pigeon is actually the person that is, by appealing to psychology and greed, is hoping to do something a little bit naughty, right? A little bit conspir uh, conspiratorial, right? But we also know these by the name 419. And the reason we call them 419 is because a disproportionate number of these scams are arriving in our relatives' email boxes from Nigeria. And the criminal code in Nigeria, uh, uh, I'm sorry, let me back up here. A typical uh, pigeon drop scam is something that you would see, like one of these emails that starts off with, Dear Sir, uh, kindly let me express my gratitude to you. I'm going to send you this massive amount of money. And in many, many cases, these are originating from Western Africa. They're not all originating from Western Africa, but in many cases they are. And they're driven by something that we know as a social engineering. And for those of you that don't know the definition of social engineering, Social engineering is the use of psychology or deception to manipulate individuals into giving information that they really shouldn't be giving. Now, for those of you that haven't seen this yet, one brilliant example of social engineering could be seen at this very conference out in the hallway if you haven't seen the NSA's <laughs> charging station where they're asking you to uh, plug in and, and charge. Go ahead and try it. What could happen, right? And I think Rob Joyce tweeted earlier tonight that they were definitely not pwned when they hooked them up, <laughs> which is kind of a start. But so pigeon drops rely on using social engineering to make the person become a co-conspirator for a couple different reasons. One, so they're less likely to go to authorities or to even ask other people, right? And we call this entire classification 419 because in Nigeria, there's a criminal code that defines this and talks about the penalties for 1,000 Naira and above. Now, we're not picking on Nigeria 
because of any kind of cultural you know, uh, bias or anything else like that. The fact of the matter is, is that between males between the ages of 15 and 24 in Nigeria, it is commonly thought that this is not stealing. A shocking number of college graduates actually uh, engage in this behavior. They call themselves Yahoo boys. And if you follow them on Instagram, you'll see photos of their very, very proud things that they're acquiring. And the social norms are just a little bit different. As a matter of fact, they very much look down on thieves because they don't really consider what they're doing to be stealing. Certainly not taking advantage of Western Europeans and Americans uh, in these types of scams. Now, I will tell you also, in addition to pointing out their Instagram accounts, they're not necessarily really good at OPSEC either because by just casual research, you'll see things like on unobscured license plates, or in this case, this person was bragging, you can see his university library card with the barcode intact in that photo. But in general, these criminal gangs operate in a hierarchy. At the very, very bottom is the romance scams. And what we're seeing in the romance scams tier of the criminal activity recently has really been best been, uh, seen in the sense of a sextortion. Now, most of you have probably seen these recently. These are the emails that are really badly written that basically say, I've caught you on your camera. Please send .01641 bitcoins to this address. Don't tell anybody, right? And the one thing we can tell you about these sextortion scams is that as badly written as they've been written so far, it is guaranteed that these will get more and more sophisticated over time because they simply work. And because of that fact, we have to be on our guard and especially telling our relatives, if you get an email that says somebody has captured pictures off of your webcam, which should be covered anyway, right? Uh, they most likely have not captured anything at all. <clears throat> Another type of attack is called a watering hole attack. And when we talk about cyber criminals, that phrase refers to the fact that criminals go to places that are target-rich environments. The, the, the term watering hole refers to the fact that, like, if you think in terms of animals and prey and predators, right, the predators are going to gather at watering holes because they know that that's going to be where there's prey. In the case of my Facebook scam that I opened with, that could be obituaries. But the one that's driving us all bonkers these days is probably the biggest watering hole of all. And that's Twitter. Now, we've all seen these, right? You can, you can barely look through Twitter at all without seeing some really big names, including verified names, such as Target or G Suite, Lucasfilms, having their accounts basically either hijacked, fished, or impersonated in many cases, and they're asking people to send Ethereum. Specifically, they're asking them to send Ethereum in exchange for getting 10 back. This is just a, a slight twist on the old scam. And so you see folks like Google that, are, that have fallen to this and Target. And how does it work? Well, it works primarily through hacked and fished accounts. But here's the thing about Twitter. How many of you, by show of hands, have the blue check mark on your Twitter account? Mm. Tara. <laughs> Well, you will actually see verified accounts that have been hijacked that have the check mark. And as my friend Dash has kind of pointed out to me before, they can actually change their username by using Periscope as a backdoor trick. So if you see a verified account that's offering to give these away, it's much more likely for people to fall for it. It's also compounded by the fact that in the cryptocurrency world, there is something called an airdrop. And an airdrop is basically a giveaway of cryptocurrency, in which case the recipient has to give their blockchain address. If you have blockchain on your bingo card, now is your, uh, there goes your bingo right there. And because of the fact that there are these airdrops, and to make it even matters worse, because of people like Vitalik Buterin, who actually does give away Ethereum on Twitter, right? there is a nugget of truth to the idea that you can get something for nothing. And the uh, website Bitcoin Stacks actually talked to real world scammers that are doing this, and the interview is kind of fascinating. 
First of all, this is an extremely lucrative affair. This particular individual makes 50,000 US dollars per day on these Twitter scams. Now that might sound mind boggling, but it turns out that you can actually check the Ethereum addresses yourself and see real time as people are falling for this scam. Now, they may also be insiders that are sending themselves Ethereum, but the fact that the money has to be tumbled so much makes it extremely unlikely that they would do that just for credibility at that expense. Now, this particular individual says it doesn't even matter if I'm verified or not, because every time I put this up using my bots, I'm flooded with so many suckers, he calls them mooches, that all we have to do from this point on is figure out how to launder the crypto assets. So the success rates are extremely high. If you think about how much it costs to do this scam, divide or multiply it into how, how lucrative it could be, it's an absolute no-brainer that we're going to see more and more and more of this. And you can actually check this real time even tonight because it's going on as we're even speaking. The last variation I kind of wanted to tell you a little bit about with regards to a 419 scam is something that I ran into a couple months ago, actually during DerbyCon, believe it or not. Shout out for DerbyCon. <laughs> uh, and that is a BIP39 scam. So in the internet world, we have something called RFCs, right? Request for comment, right? RFC 1918 is about network address translation. RFC 4364 is about multi-protocol label switching. In the cryptocurrency world, they have an equivalent called BIP, okay? That's the, the Bitcoin Improvement Program, and those are numbered. And BIP39 actually defines a 24-word seed phrase that you can use to generate a private key, okay? And based on a word list of 2,048 words, the first three characters of which are always unique, if you have this 24-word phrase, then you can always re regenerate that private key. So if you can memorize 24 of these words, then you can actually uh, generate that key. Now what happened uh, to me a, f a few months ago was that I was approached by somebody out of nowhere that wanted to go into business. Specifically, he wanted to do some crypto mining. And I said, you know, what are you asking me for? Do I know you? And he said, pardon me, I wish to build a rapport with you before I make my proposal. <laughs> and I said, okay, that sounds pretty blatant. Um, what do you have in mind? I mean, I feel like we have a pretty good rapport. And he said, none at all. This is what I want to do is, I'm not sure if we have a good rapport, but I'm going to set up a blockchain account for you with a username and a password and we're going to be able to do transactions across this account. I thought, well, that's interesting. That's a new one for me. He's actually giving me a key and a username and password on this particular account and promising 150% ROI. Now, in this particular case, by the way, ROI was 14 business days on crypto asset mining. So I guess they just take off holidays and weekends. But at any rate, I was curious. And so I logged into this, this website, and it was blockchain.com. And I come to find out, it actually has some really advanced features. It has whitelisting, it has blacklisting, it has multi-factor authentication, you have the ability to change your passwords, and a lot of these other pieces. But one of the curious things that it lets you do is link to an external wallet. So I thought, hmm, this guy's given me a username and password but he's being extremely insistent that I need to change that password. Okay, he keeps pushing, please make sure that you change that password. Did you change that password? Did you change that password? Now the reason that this criminal is saying change your password is because he has the BIP39 key phrase. He has the private key for this wallet. But I went ahead and linked a very large uh, Bitcoin wallet. It had 55 Bitcoins in it because I thought that might get his attention. And it did. But just for giggles, I also thought, you know, I think I might want to take advantage of some of these, these features, like the whitelisting and the blacklisting. But I'm going to go ahead and send him a different wallet address so that I can control that. 
And because of that, and because I was able to enable multi-factor authentication, we're actually able to walk through how this scam is perpetuated. Again, the criminal knows at all times the private key. And in the cryptocurrency world, if you have the private key, you have the asset every time. And that's non-revocable in this case. It doesn't matter username, password, multi-factor, anything. He has that phrase so he can restore that key. And so if you're actually curious about who this was, you know, looking at OSINT, it was a hijacked, pretty detailed account from somebody by this name and with these kind of photos, who I actually did try to find in the real world thinking that perhaps this person had been victimized, but I could not find that person. And ultimately, at the end of the day, I ended up giving him his own new wallet. Okay? And I picked a specific password for him so that we could track the, these, using these features all of the logins and time of day as he handed off this account to more and more skilled hackers who were chasing the 55 bitcoins to get some information on their operating systems and the way that they, they actually operate. And if you want to learn more about that, you can actually read the entire story by going to scamthatscammer.com. So how do we counter this stuff? Uh, just to give you uh, just a little bit of background, the fundamental problem with cryptocurrency and all 419 scams is that criminals are extremely mature. They've had a long time to develop their methods and the risk reward ratio is off the charts. The chances of being extradited to the United States because you're perpetuating this type of crime is almost zero. The only time that these folks are really ever caught is when they do come to the United States and they're somehow tracked here. So, to leave you with some tips. Teach your parents OPSEC. Teach them about not necessarily tweeting things like how many bitcoins they have or even about writing things on Facebook funeral walls or anything like that. Be careful about your license plates <laughs> and ultimately just practice security hygiene, whether that's actually password hygiene, patch hygiene, situational awareness, etc. It really comes down to this. You have to control your keys because if you don't control your keys, you don't control your assets. And in the crypto asset world, the best way to do this is to use a hardware wallet, which ironically enough is typically reset with a BIP39 phrase, uh, and get a hold of those because of the fact of the matter is, is that phishing will continue to get more and more advanced, and we need to as well. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Mr. Redacted. All right, so that is the last fire talk of the evening. Um, so just for anybody that's interested, these talks were recorded. Uh, and they'll, if you didn't have a friend that was recording them online, uh, they'll be available in about a week or so with the rest of the SmooCon talks. Um, I just wanted to thank, I, I, I don't know, so we had about, uh, I'm rounding up, wink, wink. But we had about 100 online viewers, so thanks to the online viewers. <laughs> and then just once again, you know, it's, it's great to have Space Road back. So yeah. It's great to be walking, <laughs> somewhat. <laughs> Thank you, Sec Barbie. And thank you, which I just learned. No, I learned this last year. Katie Mo. Yeah. Katie Mo. It's not Kate Emo. It's oh. pronounced Katie Mo. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to thank all the speakers this year. Just, just very fascinating topics. Loved it. Um, and also, the first timers. So there were a few first timers. They, they did a great job. So thanks. And then kind of following up on that, you know, please track us for next year. So submit next year. And also we love new speakers. That's kind of one of the points here is to you don't have to come and put together like a whole hour long talk and do some complex research, but it's just 15 minutes uh, and it's a great start so that, um, so that you can make the main, I don't know, 
Snoo con draw. But, are we, are we gonna judge? okay, sec Barbie. Are we going to judge? Eh, we have should we let him judge? We don't have to. All right, we're going to let him judge. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Sorry. Uh, one job. So why did nobody tell me there was, there was Fire Talk Bingo and I didn't get to play? And, and he said cyber. Did anybody have that one? No? Okay. Um, so you, when, you fir when, I first read the, when I first read the talk that it was all about 419s, there was an old hacker group of the 419s in the 419 area code, and I thought that's what this talk was going to be about. And I'm like, I was disappointed at first. And then, and then you did not show the video, I Chop Your Dollar, which if you don't know, is a video by a rapper in Nigeria about 419 scams. And you didn't use it. <laughs> Minus a bazillion points. Minus. Next. All right. I'm a little worried about the whole, your, your cloud of interaction because I'm worried for hacks for pancakes right now, just saying. Also, <laughs> Speaking of your Facebook interactions, we're no longer friends. No, no. Anyway, um, I did like what you said about obituaries. Everybody knows people put too much fucking shit in obituaries. I can learn about everybody because of who died in your family. It's terror fucking bull. And four one again, back to 419. I thought it was about Toledo. And the last thing, do you know what con we're at, everybody? What con is this? ShmooCon, right? ShmooCon. It's not DerbyCon. We talk about DerbyCon. Next week. That's it. Or yesterday. Or yesterday in Space Rogues. Okay, so just to wrap, wrap it up here. Um, yeah, I mean, at first, to me, the topic was like, wah, wah, but you actually did hit some really good points. And also, your presentation style was great. You know, it was, it's always good to end on, you know, a very, it, we love the new speakers. We do love them. And to end on a really nice, you know, well put together, well balanced speech is, is always a, an uplifting thing with how much liquor we've had. And um, minus a thousand because you said blockchain and minus a thousand because you said Bitcoin, but they were relevant. So I gave you those points back. You know, I just took them away to be petty. And then I, I gave them back because it's only right they were relevant. Um, Plus a thousand on uh, giving a resource, scan that scammer.com. That's fascinating. I'm going to check that one out. So thank you very much. Great. All right. So, like, all that stuff that I said five minutes ago, right? So, just we can replay that and we'll be good. But what I, the last thing that I did want to say was that uh, I hope all the speakers are going to be available at closing ceremonies because we do have some significant. Uh, gift certificate prizes. So you definitely want to be there. Um, that's it. Any uh, closing comments from the judges? It's glad to be back and vertical. Thank you. I feel honored to be amongst these two. Look them up if you don't know who the hell they are. <laughs> um, we definitely want more speakers next year. The more the merrier. I think this is a great... This is a great little starting garden uh, for a lot of people and a lot of uh, interesting topics that can be bite-sized. So please do yeah. submit next year. Quality yeah. of talks was really high this year, and yeah. I hope we see if this trend continues. So. Yeah. Thank you, speakers. New speakers, if you haven't spoken, if we haven't said it enough times, please come up with an interesting topic and submit because this is your chance to, this is your start. So please submit next year. Thank you.